Hey, Shalom, Israel. First off, I would like to say, call Hala, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah Bahashim, Rakakodash. I would like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who taught me. Also, I would like to say peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect, the Akim that's pushing this word in all sincerity and faith throughout the four corners of the earth. Uh, just in the spirit with another lesson here, uh, going into the, uh, the Day of Atonement, which is pretty much an opportunity for us all through the spirit just to reflect on just different uh, uh, shortcomings, so to speak, and, and different uh, sins and, and things that we need to work uh, work on with, within this flesh, just to uh, make our calling and election sure, so that we can keep ourselves in the best position to hopefully receive mercy when Yahweh Shah returns upon this earth. So it's just beautiful that we're not subject by the curse of the law through that sacrifice that Yahweh Shah made we have adoption, we have access back to the Heavenly Father, so we can't take this uh, gift for granted, so to speak. We can't take the sacrifice that Yahweh Shah made for granted. So just during this Day of Atonement, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful opportunity while we still have a, a time of grace for us all to reflect, all to examine ourselves like the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith, you know, and just really uh, strive and pray that the Most High gives us strength to press on towards the mark of our hard calling. But I'm going to get a few scriptures through the Spirit. You know, hopefully this will edify. Uh, because 2020, man, this year has just been popping off. It's just been uh, all different types of prophecies and judgments going out in the earth. And we understand that the only way out of this situation is through the mercies of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. So... We, we have to tread lightly and we can't take this time of grace and liberty in the Lord, you know, for an occasion of the flesh. So I know I'm so thankful myself, you know, that, you know, I have another opportunity to just to reflect on things that I need to correct. Uh, I'm going to get this here first. I was trying to kind of figure out how I wanted to start it, but I'll just start off here in 1 John 2 and 1. It says, my little children, and this is talking about. Uh, the nation of Israel, because only the uh, the nation of Israel will the children of the Most High. Henceforth, the word Israel in Hebrew is Yasharala, which is uh, we're uh, the prince of the power or sons of the Most High. So it says, my little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And we understand that when this sinful flesh when we're creatures uh, made subject to vanity so you know we're gonna go off but the scripture says that the righteous man falls seven times and pick himself back up i'm loosely paraphrasing the proverb so we're not supposed to sin willfully just because we have grace in yahweh shah it tells us that in uh romans the third chapter also in romans the sixth chapter i'm gonna start over uh first john 2 and 1 it says my little children these things write out unto you that ye sin not and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, the righteous. So if any man does sin, we do have an advocate. We have a mediator. We have a lawyer, you know, that can basically make a plea bargain for us to the Heavenly Father, which is Yahweh Shah. Which Yahweh Shah, he conquered sin in the flesh. When he came as Yahweh Shah, he didn't commit any sin. That's why he was known as the perfect sacrificial lamb to be able to adopt us back to the Heavenly Father. Ver, uh, verse 2, it says, And he, talking about Yahweh Shah, and he is the propitiation for our sins. And I wanted to go into that word propitiation. So it says that he, Yahweh Shah, is the propitiation of our sins. And this word propitiation in the Greek uh, G2434, it says halesmos. And it says, when you go into that definition, it says, and appeasing, the means of appeasing. The Strong's definition, it says atonement. So that's the point I wanted to get. So it says that Yahweh Shah is the propitiation or atonement for our sins, man. So henceforth, we're at the Day of Atonement. Which Yahweh shot ultimately through the Spirit, He's the atonement for our sins. Only Yahweh Shah, through 
through the spirit of his father, Yahweh has the power to forgive our sins, man, through that blood sacrifice that he made. Because any time that there's sin, in order for a remission of sin, there has to be a blood sacrifice, which I'm going to go into the scripture that backs that up here a little later. But I'll read this verse again. Salaki, I was trying to go back to it. This is 1 John 2 and 2. It says, And he, Yahweh Shah, is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours, and not for ours only, but for also, but also for the sins of the whole world. And that world is talking about the cosmos, which is the whole world of Israel. So Yahweh Shah, he's the atonement for our sins, man. So during this day of atonement, while brothers are going through the fast, while we're examining and reflecting, we always need to, you know, keep in mind and just be grateful for the sacrifice that Yahweh Shah so we can have propitiation or atonement to have our sins forgiven. And I'm going to read this real quick just to back up some things that I just read in 1 John, the second chapter concerning Yahweh Shah being the propitiation or the atonement for our sin. I'm going to start off, really, when you read uh, Hebrews, the ninth chapter, this whole ninth chapter is edifying. If brothers have the time and the spirit to do so, I would suggest reading that. But just for time's sake and just to hit, you know, certain points, I'm going to start in verse 22. Uh, this is Hebrews 9 and 22. It says, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. So it says, and almost all things by the law are purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. So backing up what I just uh, was saying earlier, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. So in order to remit sin, there has to be a shedding of blood. Of course, according to the old law, you know, we would sacrifice, you know, a, a, a lamb, a goat, you know, a turtle dove, so on and so forth. But the point being made, there's no remission without the shedding of blood. Which, uh, through the new covenant, there's no need that we make those blood sacrifices of animals because Yahweh Shah, he was the ultimate sacrifice to adopt us back to the Heavenly Father. And I'm going to read that later. Because anytime there was sin, the, 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 the priest, they would have to constantly make those sacrifices of animals. But Yahweh Shah made a sacrifice one time, you know, to, to basically give us atonement for sins. I'm just going to read the rest of this uh, chapter in verse uh, in, in, in chapter nine. It says, and without shedding of blood is no remission. Verse 23, it says, it was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. And it's talking about the sacrifice that Yahweh Shah made going up on that cross. That is that outweighs that trumps the sacrifices of animals like we did under the old covenant. Verse 24 it says, For Yahweh Shah Mashiach is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of the Most High for us. So those sacrifices of old, those were basically only um I guess, for lack of a better word, uh, symbolic representations of the true sacrifice that Yahweh Shah himself made, which Yahweh Shah, he's able to appear in the presence of the Most High for us to be our mediator. It says, because in the, under the old covenant, the, the priest acted as the mediator uh, to, uh, to make atonement uh, for the sins of the children of Israel. But Yahweh Shah, he's the chief priest under the order of Melchizedek. It says, verse 25, nor yet that he should offer himself often. Just like I was saying, it says, nor yet that he should offer himself often. Because the priest, any time that there had to be an atonement for sins, they had to constantly make those blood sacrifices. And it's going to say it. It says, nor yet that he should offer himself often. <clears throat> As the high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once 
in the end of the world had he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice himself. So Yahweh Shah, he only, he, he only had to make one sacrifice. So that's beautiful. That's why that sacrifice is so precious. That's why we esteem and high regard that sacrifice that Yahweh Shah made. He made one sacrifice to give us forgiveness of sins. So we can always constantly make atonement for sins because we're going to constantly go off and have to make sins. But all we have to do now through that blood that Yahweh Shah shed is pray to the Lord and repent. And our sins are, are, are forgiven. It says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Hamashiach Yahweh Shah was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So Yahweh Shah, he offered himself once to bear the sins of many. So that's beautiful, that, that, that sacrifice that Yahweh Shah made, man. We can't give Yahweh Shah enough glory, man, and reverence for, that, that, for that, uh, that sacrifice that he made. I'm going to go to another scripture. This is uh, Acts, the 17th chapter. It says, In the times of this ignorance, the Most High winked that. But now commanded all men everywhere to repent. So, before we came into this truth, even there was a, a there was a, a point in time where the Most High winked at our ignorance because that word ignorance it means to not know. So before we knew this truth, then you know the things that we were going off within this world, you know, uh, worshiping all of these different idols. Worshipping and serving all of these different gods, just committing all of, of, of a manner of abominations and sins. It was a time that the Most High winked at our ignorance. But now that we know this truth, now that we have Yahweh Shah that's made that sacrifice to adopt us back to the Heavenly Father, it says, But now commanded all men everywhere to repent. So now that we have this truth, now that Yahweh Shah went on that cross. And made that sacrifice to adopt us back to the Heavenly Father to make that ultimate atonement for our sins. We have to repent. We have to turn back. We have to make changes in our own lives, man. We have to make our own daily sacrifices unto the Heavenly Father through His Son, Yahweh Shah. The scripture says in Romans the 12th chapter that we make our own bodies a living sacrifice in different ways. The main way that we do that is through uh, the truth. Through uh, going out on the highways and the byways and making confession to Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah. And then in other ways, keeping the laws of the Heavenly Father to the best of our ability. You know, making those different sacrifices in the flesh. Even here on the Day of Atonement, you know, making a sacrifice in our body, afflicting ourselves uh, through fasting. Which brothers should get in the spirit to fast, you know, outside of just the Day of Atonement itself. But, you know... Every man has a, a different measure in spirit, so you do accordingly based on the spirit that the Most High gave you. But I'm going to continue on. It says, uh, because he had appointed a day, verse 31, it says, because he had appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. So, the Most High hath appointed a day in which he's going to judge the world in righteousness by the man who he hath ordained, which is his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah, who made that ultimate you know, sacrifice for us, man. So that's why it's important that brothers get in the spirit to repent. And repentance is a constant process, man, because like I said, we're going to constantly go off in these flesh, you know. But the process is to uh, try to offend less. In fact, I'll go ahead and get that. Yeah, this is, I'm in the Apocrypha now in uh, Sirach or Ecclesiastes chapter 17. And I'll start at verse 24. It says, but unto them that repent, he granted them return and comforted those that fell in patience. So only the nation of Israel and chiefly the elect right now are given uh, opportunity to repent during this time of grace. We have opportunity to return to the Heavenly Father. It says, verse 25, Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins, 
make thy prayer before his face and offend less. So the way that we take those steps to return unto the Lord is by repentance. And then we have to forsake our sins, meaning you just can't keep going off in the same things, man. You can't sin willfully. The scripture says that the Most High didn't give any man license to sin. It says, make thy prayer before his face and offend less, meaning you have to level up, man. You have to offend less in the same things that you went off in previously, man. Just because Yahweh Shah uh, made that propitiation and atonement for our sins through his blood sacrifice, that just doesn't give us leeway just to constantly commit sin and, and just constantly offend. You have to offend less. Matter of fact, I'll get this. This is Galatians 5 and 13. It says, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. And another word for liberty is this, this period of grace that we have in the Lord. It says, Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. So we're not supposed to uh, use our liberty for an occasion to the flesh, meaning continuing to, uh, uh, to sin and to constantly offend. It says, but by love, serve one another. And we that, and we know that love, according to the scriptures, is the keeping of the most highest commandments. And we also serve one another. I'm going to get another scripture. I think this is the last scripture I wanted to get in this short lesson. And I'll, I'll just end out. This is Hosea 5 in the last verse, verse 15. It says, I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. So one of the first uh, steps in the process of repenting, you have to acknowledge your offense, man, meaning take ownership, meaning take accountability to where you went off, to where you were in error. And a lot of our people, two thirds, namely, they refuse to even acknowledge their offense. A lot of our people, they don't think that there's anything wrong with the way that they're going, man. But the elect, one of those first steps in coming to the truth and to coming into repentance is you have to acknowledge that we as a people or you as an individual, you went off, man, and that you need mercy, man, because we all fall short of the glory of the Heavenly Father through His Son, Yahweh Shot. Matter of fact, it was another scripture I want to get. I believe it's in Romans, the third chapter, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, I'm going to read this real quick. This is uh, Romans 3 and 23. It says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of the Heavenly Father. So that's why it's important that we acknowledge our offense. Because we all have sinned and come short of the glory of the Heavenly Father. That's why we all need an abundance of mercy to get out of this situation. To be redeemed. Out of Babylon the Great in the midst of all of this thermonuclear destruction that's set to hit this place, man. It says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Hamashiach Yahawashah. Whom the Most High has set forth to be a propitiation or an atonement through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of the Most High. Let's look up that word forbearance. Let's look up that word forbearance real quick. Salakia, I'm trying to navigate this dang thing. Uh, forbearance in the Greek, Strong's G463. It says, a noche. It says, toleration. I'm going to go into the Strong's definition. Self-restraint, tolerance. In the lexicon, it says, yeah, that's what I was looking for. It says, in Greek writings, a holding back, delaying to hold back. So I'm going to read that. So that word forbearance means a delaying to hold back. Like I know uh, you can get like uh, student loans. You can get a forbearance on your student loans basically to where they hold back the penalty for you not being able to pay on time. So we have that same access through the propitiation or atonement through Yahweh Shah's blood sacrifice that he made. 
I'm going to read uh, Romans 3 and 25 again. It says, Whom the Most High has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of the Most High. So our sins are delayed pretty much, man. We have a period of grace to get ourselves in order. We have an opportunity to offend less before the judgment, man, through that sacrifice that Yahweh Shah made, man. So what Yahweh Shah did is so beautiful. It's so beautiful, man. And we have to constantly give recognition to that sacrifice, man, and acknowledge our offense and always constantly realize that we need Yahweh Shah's mercy or we need Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah's mercy to make it out of this situation. I'll read Hosea 5 and 15 again and end out the lesson. This is Hosea 5 and 15. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. And the scriptures tells you in Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, remember the creator in the days of thy youth while the evil days come not. And it's a lot of evil days that's coming to great Babylon, America, man. So we're going to need the mercies of of Yahweh, why Yahweh shot, man. So right now, during this time of grace, during this time of liberty, we need to be seeking out the face of the Heavenly Father through His Son. We need to be repenting. We need to be acknowledging our offense. We need to be working on offending less through the Spirit. So it's beautiful, brothers, that we have this opportunity, another day of atonement, to fast, to reflect, to, re to reflect, to pray, to beg the Most High for forgiveness and mercy for our sins. So let's just use this opportunity just to level up in the spirit. Uh, hopefully this made uh, sense and edified. I want to just give brothers a blessed, you know, day of atonement through the spirit. Uh, with that being said, I want to give all praises to Yahweh. By Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Double, uh, uh, also uh, double uh, blessings to the, the, the hopeful elect. With that, I want to say Shalom.